Uh, hi, uh, this is a quick lightning talk about IPFS in web browsers, in web browser. <laughs> so, um, my name is Marcin Atay. You may know me everywhere as this sine wave called Lido, and I'm leading in web browsers working group. Uh, the goal of this working group is to make uh, the web platform the D web platform. Uh, what we mean by that is to make sure IPFS as a technology, as a set of libraries and solutions tools uh, are a part of the web stack that web developers can use uh, to make it a, one of default choices to build a great web apps. And we do that by creating custom browser integrations, such as browser extensions. We work with browser vendors directly to integrate IPFS technologies and to uh, extend existing APIs create new APIs, solve performance issues. Mm -hmm. And generally, we try to understand the existing challenges of IPFS in web browser context. There's more than one browser context, and there are many challenges in each of them. Uh, for example, like WebRTC does not work in web workers, and it does not work as well for our use cases in regular websites. Most of you may be familiar, if not, uh, this is our browser extension called IPFS Companion. It's a browser companion extension to your local IPFS node. If you don't have it, go to Firefox Store or uh, Chrome Store and install it from a release channel. There's also like a beta channel. Uh, we make uh, monthly uh, stable releases, uh, weekly betas. Uh, feel free to try it. Uh, there's a lot of uh, GUI uh, that expose uh, internal IPFS uh, features, but uh, that will be in the next talk. Uh, in this talk, I want to focus on things that developers from this developer meeting may appreciate, and that's like something I called IPFS Path Uplift, which is a fancy way to say redirect. Uh, just start using content addressing today. If you are building websites, uh, Make sure your paths are valid IPFS paths. Our browser extension will detect that, validate content ID, and uh, make use of local IPFS node instead of uh, sending uh, requests over HTTP transport. And it's how we do it now. In future, there will be other solutions to uplift uh, those paths. For example, service worker gateways, which were mentioned. And we'll have like a deep dive today. Uh, Another feature is exposing a safe subset of IPFS APIs on every website. We got like a conservative uh, access controls. Those might be annoying at this point, but we want to play it safe. Uh, most of uh, APIs can be safely scoped per application, so no dialogue is displayed to user. Uh, for example, a mutable file system uh, is scoped per application in a fashion similar to service workers. Uh, generally, it's a living prototype. Feedback is welcome. Uh, go to IPFS Companions repository. There's a, like a doc subdirectory, and uh, there are notes on this new interface, uh, Q&A, code samples, and stuff like that. Uh, you may ask, is browser extension all IPFS in web br browsers group uh, is doing? No, we are generally tackling a lot of open problems uh, that uh, JS IPFS and generally IPFS as a protocol uh, and uh, ecosystem is. Uh, facing in the web browser context. Uh, those are some of them. There's more. Uh, one that I want to extremely highlight today is to move to the base 32, CAD version 1, uh, encoding. And we need that if we want to uh, be uh, to have a presence in uh, browsers. Uh, we need to have a proper way to represent the authority component so that uh, origin-based security parameter is respected by the browsers. And our content ID, the root content hash, will be the authority component. Uh, so I hope we'll move this uh, forward this week. Uh, we plan to ship new web UI with Companion. What's web UI, you ask? You will know about that after next lightning talk. Uh, there are multiple like performance issues, uh, strange bugs across different vendors related to pushing a lot of data. Uh, that's what IPFS is doing. 
Uh, so we are tracking uh, those down. We try to uh, move the uh, uh, ceiling on the file size limit a uh, bit up. And uh, we want to embed JS IPFS with the browser extension. It's actually possible right now. You can go to the preferences and switch to the embedded node. But uh, it's not uh, that magical experience. Uh, we all want, and uh, hopefully, like David uh, mentioned, uh, this uh, quarter we'll try to address that. Why I mentioned it here is that in the browser extension context, we can add additional, uh, we can add additional powers to the JS IPFS. Those might be new APIs like DNS lookups, like uh, raw socket APIs, uh, multicast DNS, native protocol handlers, and so on and so forth. And we hope uh, that will make the experience of having one node that is exposed to all pages even better. And if you are interested in those challenges or have an idea or your own challenges in the browser context, please join us on the GitHub. There's a meta repository for like high level planning and uh, uh, overview. And there's like IRC channel. Also, we are part of uh, IPFS GUI working group. We interoperate. So make sure to check them also as well. And uh, thank you. That's all. Do you have any questions? Yeah, John. So I saw the issue as far as the privacy concerns and correlation, given your your unique window uh, ID or uh, yeah. IPFS node. And so I think um, I, I, there could be a solution for using a, using a combination with a nonce or a HD wallet, where actually you have a derivative ID. And so I think. Um, so every time you have a new session for a website, or you have a pair-wise association for each ID for each website you go to, like we're, we're one domain. And so I think um, that would be interesting. To yeah. So to generally, that. we are exposing a safe subset of uh, like IPFS APIs, and one of those APIs is like the ID. So you actually are, have uh, provide a unique identifier of your node. Uh, we may uh, provide kind of a sandboxing solution that you mentioned. Uh, like for file systems, we do that. Uh, we currently, for more sensitive APIs, uh, we provide a dialogue to the user that user needs to explicitly approve this like website to have access to the API. And in future, we will switch, uh, like move to uh, the direction of uh, sandboxing instead of like nagging user with additional Questions, yeah. right. I, I just wanted to mention really quickly too, uh, to add some context to the raw socket APIs and stuff like that. Um, GitHub.com slash Mozilla slash libdweb. Yeah. Um, Mozilla is actually working on amp implementing stuff for web extensions, like raw socket access, like multi multicast DNS, right? Yeah, multicast DNS yeah. for local discovery. Uh... Address bar control, so like that we can actually do the you know schema colon slash slash. Like this is all happening right now, and like it actually works with like nightly. So like we're you should take a look at that if you're interested.